Okay guys, before I start this review, I going to inform you that next month, that would be May, I will have a villain month. Yes, I will do several villain related videos, like uh, uh, character files and I, l I didn't like my first top 10 Disney villain video, so I deleted that one and I'm making an updated version. And uh, since my top 10 non-Disney movie video has become my most watched video, I am thinking on sublimating it with a top 10 non-Disney villain video. But one villain that is gonna appear on that list uh, is a character from a movie I don't think most people ever heard of. And that movie is War of... Sorry, War of the Birds or Oliver and Olivia as it's known in some countries. Just like a lot of European animation, Watch It Down, Plague Dogs, etc. This is not a film for little kids, uh, but a film that features a lot of violence and vulgar behavior despite having colorful characters and standard animation. I think it's appropriate for older kids, but it's certainly not a, a film for all ages. The plot is like this. An orphan finch named Oliver and an orphan sparrow named Olivia is raised by a sparrow and an owl and when they grow up they swear to kill Fagin, which is this predatory bird that killed both their parents. So it is basically a dark comedy about revenge. The main character of Oliver is a rather dark hero for a family film. Most protagonists have very noble goals like saving a loved one or finding a way home, but Oliver's m primary motivation is revenge. This might not make him as likable as most heroes, but it makes him more unique and I'm glad to see that animated films during the 90s did more than simply rehash old stories. He is actually pretty similar to Littlefoot from The Land Before Time. In the end of Land Before Time, Littlefoot could easily have slipped by the giant T-Rex, but he said, fuck it, let's kill that son of a bitch. Let's take revenge for my parents. Or parent. Olivia is a lot more childish and less serious than Oliver. She is sort of annoying, but also kind of charming. She is like a job younger sibling. Their adoptive mother is a noble and heroic character that does not only take care of them both, but also saves a lot of other animals in trouble. Often by pretending to be hurt, so predators go after her instead of their intended prey. She also has a great sarcastic attitude to her. I really like her and it's sad to see that her heroics cost her her life later when she is killed by Fagin. Her husband, Owl, yes, this movie has cross species relationships, and I get to that in a minute. Uh, Owl is a hilarious jerk that sleeps all day and spends all night at a strip club for birds called the Pipe. He also sc scares and tricks Oliver in order to steal his food. Did I mention he is an asshole? But he's such an entertaining asshole. I know I should not like him, but I just kind of do. There is also a pair of comical mice that join Oliver and Olivia in their war against Fagin. Ingolf is really funny. He is a pyromaniac that always proposed to put fire on Fagin. Also he wished to fly. Because every bird movie has to have one character that wished to fly, right? He is rather stupid and irresponsible, but thankfully he has his older brother Frederick to look after him. Then there is Armstrong, a seagull whose only personality is to poop and laugh constantly. Yeah, that got old pretty quickly. And now the character that is the reason for this review, Fagin one of my favorite villains ever. They never say what kind of bird he is, but I think he is a sea eagle. He does not only kill for food, but mostly for the fun of it. 
He is extremely ruthless and no one is a better witness than Pidion, a mentally disturbed and scare sorry, scarred Pidion that Fagin uses as a spy, informing him about the other bird's whereabouts. And if she disobeys him, he cuts her. Fagin's very presence creates an imposing atmosphere. He rules the forest by fear, and when Oliver starts a war against him, the other birds in the forest is so afraid of Fagin that they turn against Oliver and Olivia. I love the character design on this guy that is almost bat-like, and he uses his talents as hands. Okay, now I go over to the technical stuff. The voice acting is overall good, but the animation is pretty inconsistent. At least I think so. Sometimes it looks like one of Martin Rosen's productions, but other times it looks like a Saturday morning cartoon. The film's biggest flaw is that just like most 90s animated movies, it's a musical. Now I don't have anything against musicals, but this is not a film that needed musical numbers. The songs are unnecessary, annoying, and you forget about them the same moment they end. I also found the cross-species romances in this film to be, well, disturbing. I would have liked it much more if Oliver and Olivia had a brother-sister relationship rather than a romance. The film reference of course Charles Dickens' Oliver Twist a lot by naming the characters Oliver and Fagin. And the character of Owl was inspired by V.C. Fields. There is also a fun little reference to Woody the Woodpecker in this movie too. A lot of really good animated films have come out of Denmark, but this is definitely my favorite. But because of the songs and the inconsistent animation and the unneeded romance, I give this film a 7 out of 10.